Hey, Thrond here, and we are back with the Katana. Uh, we had a reply to us by Donnie Reed. Uh, he's an excellent swordsman. He has his own YouTube channel. Be sure and go by there and uh, like his videos and subscribe. Uh, give him some comments. Uh, he's a good friend of ours. I know him well online from all swords. I post there. I also like all the videos he posts and whatever everybody else posts. So on. Uh, uh, Facebook, if you go by there, you can uh, ask to join the group and be sure and join up with them. I think you'll enjoy all sorts. It's a very good site. But what he did is he made a reply video to me, and he did 32 layers of denim. It looked like light denim, but tightly packed and taped really, really tight to two bottles like this. And we've got them right here. We've got the same kind of rig. The thing is, we're, we're trying to simulate armor on a body. Generally, denim wasn't used back then, as far as I know, for gambesons. You want something that has bounce to it. This is one of our tougher gambesons here that we've used on the videos where the katana tip shot could not go through. But we normally don't have this angle. Normally we're doing the wide, broad section of the uh, body. We're trying to hit that. So with the European source to get in there, you pretty much have to use the tip to slice it. With the katana, you can step in a little bit closer and use more of the edge and pretty much slice through it due to the curvature and the way the sword works and the rigidity. and. I mean, we've proven that. It, it, we just said that a lot of times it doesn't go quite as deep cutting through that many layers and that broad. That's a lot broader than our surface here, which he had a smaller piece that only curved around to about here of denim. So my only argument with it is not his fault. He just set the test up the best he could. Uh, that he started at the edge. He was cutting at the edge of the material, like if you were cutting at the edge of a sheet of paper and trying to cut through the center of it. Pretty much if you have material like this and you hit with more of the blade, you have more fibers you have to slice so it takes more and more force. It escalates. I can feel the force in my hands when I'm cutting through this material. This doesn't feel like cutting something where it just glides through. So uh, if you cut on the edge, it's more like cutting tatami. You're going to cut it in such a way that you're already started, like you've already got a hole in it to begin with, and it can start slicing. So you're not slicing through as much material. But what we've done today is set it up like if we were going to do this test, and we have our gambeson, which is much longer because it's only on a longer bottle, wrapping all the way around and we never start from one edge to the other edge because it wouldn't be on a human body that way. No Akatin, no Gambeson will be set up without being completely around the body, casing the body. So anyway, now that now that we've established that, let's go ahead and try the cut. This is not uh, arguing with Donnie. We love him. We love this kind of, uh, uh, you know, replies back and forth. That's why we learn a lot more about swords, how they cut, uh, and how they may have been used historically. Now, this may not be equal to actual Gambeson. There's Gambesons back then that were way tougher than this that were standalone. Uh, they had perfected the art. We're just using a bunch of layers of cloth that we think is linen-like and coarse and strong with a little bit of padding. So let's go ahead and try this out. You ready? Yep. Do it that way, fuck you. You want me to? Do it. Now, let's see what happened. Where did we hit it? I hit it a wee bit high. So maybe that doesn't count. I can re refill it with water. Let's try again. We didn't cut any bottles here. Yeah. Okay, now we've changed what we're striking. It's much more like his. We have a little overlap here, not much, that he started on, like in this area, which is barely on the bottle. So we're starting with the edging of it. We don't have as much circling around to help uh, slow down the cutting by more fibers and more material that it has to go through. So basically, we're just cutting the edging as we start to go through. And we're going to see if we get the, the same results as he did. We probably won't go all the way through the backside because remember, that other material had to go somewhere, and I didn't want to double it over again because it's already performing very, very well, and I think it would be too much. We just reversed the way we put it. Let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay, we're ready. Ready when you are. And in this case, our gambeson I think is much tougher than his, but look at the difference in the cut. Looks like he cut the edging much easier and cut plain into it. 
I'd like to try this on another rig too if I get a chance, but you can see exactly what happened. All right, I'm back and I've got a rig very much like uh, Donnie Reed's. He was nice enough, uh, gracious enough to actually come back and show us the amount of layers he cut, the type of material, which is a gi, and that's what we've got here. We've got the uh, gi type uh, denim from an old gi that I had from years ago. Uh, actually, one of my Bujangan gis from early days. And uh, old pants. Uh, and we've also got our uh, bottles set up, much like he did. We've got them taped with duct tape securely and tautly, which is something we normally don't do. And he did have an overlap on the side. He showed that. He did have it coming around the side to start his cut. So my thing on that is that with this angle here, instead of cutting in with the tip like we're trying to do, which would be something like this to start the cut, instead of cutting like this way, like I was saying, you actually have some place to start with a portion of the front of the sword that's not the actual tip. It's the tip, but it's this part of the tip, not the actual tip trying to penetrate in this motion, like trying to come in this way. So, I mean, I don't know, but I'm thinking it's making a difference on the actual technique and the results you get. So what we're going to do right now is try to replicate his cut and see if we get the same thing. Now we've got basically the same result as Donnie did. As you can see here, it flipped up from it being stretched out. We've got it really taut with the tape like he did and the same rig and set up with the two bottles. Uh, apparently with the light, slight curvature on the side, which is more than I thought it was, uh, it's a perfect angle to start your cut with the katana, so it allows it to cut beautifully with straight through. It didn't seem difficult at all, not like us cutting our gambeson. We tested our gambeson many times, and we actually tried the same technique with our gambeson and didn't get the same results with the gambeson using the other thing. But thank you, Donnie, for giving us the information on how to replicate the uh, test we got the same results when we set up the test the exact same way as you did. Uh, so, I mean, you didn't do anything wrong. You just did what you, you thought you were supposed to do. I would probably set it up a little bit different if I was trying to replicate a uh, situation with gambeson, like such as the angle here. I mean, possibly if you get this muscle just right on the gambeson, you'd have less uh, area to cut. So you might start cutting right into it and then cut right into these guys. Depends on how you hit the person. If you're trying to hit in the belly, you wouldn't have that luxury because you have the width across like we do on our larger bottles that we test on. And that's why we use those as analogs because that's the larger surface area and we're trying to cut into it. So it kind of changes and this tip shape actually makes quite a bit of difference. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed our episode. Be sure and go by and check out uh, Donnie Reed's YouTube site. Uh, be sure and go by and, and uh, ask to uh, join all swords. I'm sure Donnie will probably let you in over there. I post there, lots of other people do, there's a lot of information about swords, uh, whether it be Japanese, uh, any type of Asian sword, European sword, I mean they pretty much have it all on the set side. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe to our channel, uh, like our, our video, subscribe to our channel, be sure and hit us up on Facebook at the uh, Thranded Elgin's Well of Remembrance and like us there. You can ask to join our private group called Thane Thran's, uh, uh, Thane Thran's YouTube Boat Crew. As a matter of fact, Donnie's a member there too, so you can talk to him as well. He posts there as well. Uh, and uh, be sure and help us out if you can on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com uh, slash Thran. You can also donate to us at uh, Thane Thran uh, at yahoo.com at PayPal. And that's also the email where you can get a hold of us if you want us to test anything that you make, on uh, any specific techniques, give us suggestions, uh, or you can even hit us up just on the, the channel I had uh, suggested our, our boat crew. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, Farvel. Ah! And my version of it. And I made it into the other bottle. And through the cloth again. Oh, well.